It's time for your favorite radio program, Chatting from the Word in the Morning, with your host brother Oscar York Divorce, where we are praying up and praising up and putting that all important snap, crackle, and pop in your Christian morning.
Good morning, good morning, good morning to you, and we're so delighted to be on this morning. <laughs> yes, we are. Yes, we are. We are so delighted to be with you this morning and to bring on uh, this beautiful episode of Chatting from the Word and this program, Chatting from the a word where we are praying up and praising up and putting that all, all, all important snap, crackle, and pop in your Christian morning. Hey, hey, hey. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Amen. And uh, a, amen. All right, all right, all right. That song, introductory song, was a song by Committed. Jesus is more. And my friend, he is definitely more. If you're going through some trials and tribulations, he is definitely uh, more. When you're going through some heartaches and pains, he is definitely more. When you're crying at midnight hour and no one else can hear you, Jesus can hear you. For Matthew 11 uh, says, Come unto me, all oh, Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So you see, my friend, Jesus is more than what we need on this beautiful, beautiful morning. Yes, he is. Amen. And uh, a amen. It was the psalmist who said these words. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you more this morning, my friend, but I am so glad that the Lord woke this old guy up here this morning, giving me another beautiful, beautiful day, a day that I, we've ne I never witnessed before. Neither have you. Amen. And amen. Knowing if you're on this time side of life, if you're on the top soil and not the soil on top of, of you, the Lord has given you another beautiful day to correct what's wrong in your life and make it right and to live closer and closer with Him. Amen. And amen. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, oh, oh, oh. And I don't know about you this morning, my friend, but I am going to correct the things that's wrong in my life. I give it a try so that I can continue walking with my Lord. Amen. And amen. My friend, if you live in the section of the world where the Oscar lives in, the the web about people says it is 70 degrees and sunny. 70 degrees and sunny. And it seems like we are going to have a beautiful day out there, Ohio, Dayton, and West Carrollton and the surrounding areas. 
It seems like we are going to have a beautiful, beautiful day. And if you need to be out in the element enjoying these, this beautiful day, be careful, be careful, be careful, be watchful. And as we say here, stay praying up and praising up because we are living in that dangerous and treacherous times. You never know what may happen. A mass a murder might be out there Try to kill everybody, or you might be in a road rage. You never know how people temper may flare up. So you need to be careful wherever you're going. Be careful, be watchful, be prayerful, praying for, and watch out for the other guy, a, a person. <laughs> Amen. And uh, a... Amen. You are listening to Chatting from the Word. That's right. You're listening to Chatting from the Word, and we're so delighted that you have your ears on and uh, that you're still listening, and we hope that you keep your ears on through the entirety of the program. And if uh, this is your first time listening, and if you're new to listening to us here on Chatting from the Word, we would love to welcome you to the program, but not just only welcome you to the program, but we would love for you to know that you are our honorary guest, and we just want to thank you this morning for having your ears on. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. Amen and amen. And my friend, we know you're going to, we know. <laughs> we know, boy, that, that, that's, you might say, that sounds definite, Bill Oscar. You know, we know, you know, we know <laughs> that you're going to enjoy this program. And so far, if you enjoy this program, and we hope that you Keep your ears on through the entirety of the program because we do have a beautiful chat. And most of you who have been listening to us on a continued basis, you know we're doing a continuance of our lesson taken from the second letter that Brother Paul wrote to the Corinthian church. And we're in chapter 8, and we're coming from, I believe this morning we're going to touch on verse 7 through maybe 11 this morning, uh, verses 7 through 11. I believe we begin in verse 7 yesterday. And so we hope that you keep your ears on long enough, long enough to hear the time. Hey, hey, hey. Amen, amen, and uh, amen, this is Friday, <laughs> uh, this is Friday, you all, and we have reached another uh, last day of the week, yes, we have, this is Friday. You are listening to Chatting from the Word. Amen, amen. Yes, right. You're listening to Chatting from the Word, and we hope you love what you're listening to. And if you love what you're listening to, share this program with your friends, with your loved ones, with your neighbors, those you're partnering up with on Facebook, clicking at Instagram, or wherever you're on the Internet. Share. Share this fine, fine program. And if you're wondering where you can catch the program, here's our announcer to allow you to know where you can listen to the program. If you're wondering where to listen to the program, of course you can Google our program chatting from the word hosted by Oscar Hall. You can pull up many of our internet networks, iHeartRadio, 45, Google Podcast, Breaker, and many, many more if you want to catch or listen to our program. Amen, amen, and amen. That is correct. If you want to catch or listen to our program, you can tune in to those in the network. And if you want to listen to us live, you can go to YouTube, Spreaker, Tumblr, and Twitter, which is X. 
If you want to listen or catch our program live, you can tune in to those uh, near that network stations if you want to catch us live. And I believe we're live on many more network uh, stations on this beautiful, uh, beautiful day. Amen. And amen. I believe we just came out of a commercial break or even going into a commercial break. And I want to thank those that have came back from the station break and you still have your ears on and you are still listening. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you. We appreciate that. We really, really do we appreciate that you still listen to us here. On cutting from the word, amen, and a, a, amen. You are listening to chatting from the word. Amen and amen. This is our prayer time, and if you have a prayer request that you want us to pray for here on chatting from the word, you can send it to our email addresses, which is lowercase Oscar York 3443 at gmail.com or chatting from the word at gmail.com, or you can put it on our messenger page, on Facebook page, on any page that you're listening to the program through, and we should be able to receive your prayer request. Sweet Bye. Uh-huh. 
that you want us to pray for here or chat from the Word, you can send it to those entities our announcer uh, just announced. Uh, and as always, if you have a prayer request that you want to keep confidential, that's fine with Brother Oscar here on Chatting from the Word. We do respect your confidentiality. Just simply say, Brother Oscar, pray for me and call my name. And I'd be just so pleased and so delighted to do just that. Again, this is our prayer time, and we must remember those that have been requesting prayers, those that are going through some difficult times, those that have lost loved ones, uh, those that are uh, going through some difficult times uh, for this nation that we live in. We need to pray for our political leaders and just pray, pray, and pray. Amen and amen. Again, this is our prayer time, and if you have a copy of God's Word and want to uh, follow us in our uh, uh, prayer read, prayer time reading, we're coming from Luke 11, verses 1 through 4. That's Luke 11, verses 1 through 4. And Luke writes... And it came to pass that he was praying in a certain place. When he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, allowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Here Jesus said, when you pray, address the Maker. Our Father as our Father. My friend, are you ready to approach the throne of grace so that we may have a little talk with our Father this morning? Our Father, our Father who sits high and looks slow. Oh, Father, we just want to thank you for being our Father this morning. Father, we just want to thank you for making all the things that exist on this earth, especially us, your man. And Father, we just want to thank you for allowing we on the top soil and not the soil on top of us. We just want to thank you this morning for waking us up, for giving all of us another chance to make what's wrong in our life right and to walk closer and closer with him. Please, Father, give us that, up, us, that opportunity to make what's wrong in our life, to correct it so that we may continue on living and loving you. Oh, Father, we thank you for allowing your only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to come down from the beauty of heaven, down to the sin-sick world, to show us how to love, to show us how to live, and to show us how to walk with you. And Father, uh, we so thank you, thank you, and thank you for that. And Father, we especially thank you for allowing him, and he himself took upon himself the cross, taking our place, becoming sin, so that our sins may be washed away in his blood. Oh, Father, we thank you, thank you so, so much 
for that because without the cross, without him dying on that old rugged cross, where would we be? Oh, Father, we pray for all the disastrous things that's going on in the world today. Yes, we do. For the earthquakes and dives of places, fires and storms that pops out of, seem like out of nowhere. Father, we want to pray for those that these fires and earthquakes have, and storms have hit. Father, we pray that they will overcome and they will continue on looking up to you from which cometh their help. Father, we pray for all the mass killings, all the road rages, all the time people lose that temper and want to just destroy people and themselves. Father, we pray for them too, those that have been affected by that. Father, we pray again that they look up to you from which cometh their help. And Father, we pray for all the nations that have been involved in wars and rumors of wars. Father, we pray that they find that peace and the peace that passes all understanding. Oh, Father, we pray for every boy, girl, man, and woman who want to accept Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that you give them the time and the opportunity to do just that. A chance to hear the gospel and believe and be in the obedience of the gospel, adding them to Christ's body. Oh, Father, Father, again, we pray for those who lost loved ones. Father, we pray that you will comfort them. Father, we pray for those that have lost loved ones due to the police. Father, we pray that you comfort them. Father, we pray for each police officer, families who have given their lives in the line of duty. Father, we pray that you be with their families, comfort them too. Father, we pray for all of our political leaders this morning. Father, we pray that you be with each and every one of them. Father, help them to make the right laws so that we can live by, but not make laws forbidding us of worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Oh, Father, we pray again for the church. Allow the church be the lighthouse. Continue on being the lighthouse, leading others to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Oh, Father, we pray for all of our listeners this morning. Father, we pray for all their doubts and fears. Father, we pray that you cast all their doubts and fears in the deepest part of the sea where they want to resurface any, any more. Oh, Father, we pray for our program this morning, Chatting from the Word. Father, help us to keep this fine program on the airways. Father, help us that we may continue teaching and preaching what does this you through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Oh, Father, we pray for the message that we are going to chat about this morning, the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. For help us that we may say something this morning to help someone that's confused about how to love you. Help us to say something to someone that's confused how to walk with you. Help us that we may say something to help someone to know how to love you. And Paul, we pray for those that are going through some difficult times at this time, because we all go to them. We pray for those that are having marital difficulties. We pray for those that are having problems with their uh, children, their children having problems at home. Father, we pray for all of our young people who are trying to reach and higher education. Father, we pray that they succeed in that so they may be a good contributor to the world in which we live. Oh, Father, Father, we pray for those that be incarcerated. Father, Father, we pray that they may get it right, live right, so that they may come out and be a modern citizens and show the world how to live and how to love. Oh, Father, we pray for the, the churches, especially those that, that are having problems following your word. Father, we pray that continue looking into the law of liberty to see 
what God commands them to do. And Father, Father, we pray for those that are teaching and preaching your word worldwide. Father, we pray for uh, that they continue preaching your word. We pray, Father, that they may overcome all the obstacles that they are going through so they may teach a dying world your word. Oh, Father, always keep us encouraged and never discouraged. In Jesus' blessed name do we pray. Amen. And a a man. scripture text along with us for praying along with us and as always we hope that we prayed for something that is excuse me that is on your minds amen and amen and as always if you have a prayer request that you want us to pray for here on chatting from the word you can send your prayer request to those entities our announcer just announced a man and uh, a a man you are listening to chatting from the word it is time for the time that i count for the day it is taken from second Corinthians chapter 8 verses 1 to 10 brother oscar it is that time come on now here's the oscar i am here I am here, and of course it's time for our chat, and uh, we hope that you have kept your ears on to this portion of the program, and as I have said on several occasions, this is the best part of the program for your brother here, because he loved chatting with you from the Word of God, because it's the Word of God that's going to save us in the end. It's the Word of God that helps us to connect with the Father in the name of Jesus and through listening to his apostles and following uh, their example. And I don't want you to forget that we... If you want to know the way to salvation is through studying God's word and following the example of his apostles because he left his apostles here for us to, 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 uh, to, believe, uh, to teach us and to believe what they're teaching and to follow uh, their example. And we must do that. And we must do that. If we're not doing that, we're not saved. If we're not doing that, we're not being the church. And when Christ comes back, when he comes back, he's coming back for his church. Those are in his body, which is the church. And I want to stress that this morning because many do not understand that he's coming back for the church, not a church for the church for his body and for the church that is 
following the example that he left in his apostles when he went on back home to the Father. And right now what Christ is doing, he's sitting on the right hand, right side of the Father, being a propitiation for us so that we may be able to be saved through him. Not through ourselves. Oh, no, we can't save ourselves. We can't save uh, going what, uh, by what we think is right. But we got to go by what Jesus says. And Jesus tells us to listen uh, to his apostles and follow their example. So this morning we were looking at Apostle Paul, which is, what, of course, an apostle of Jesus Christ. And we're looking at his teachings uh, this morning, and we hope that you have your Bibles turned to our uh, chapter. We're coming from, of course, uh, 2 Corinthians, uh, the 8th chapter, verses 7 through 11, uh, or 12. We might hit a little bit on 12 this morning, so we hope that you turn to that. And we're going to look at Romans 6, and of course, we're going to look at Le uh, Luke 9, I believe. And then we are going to hit Galatians. I believe we're going to hit Galatians. And I really hope, again, that you keep your ears on to this chat this morning because I love chatting with you, and I hope that you love us chatting with you as well. And, of course, if you, you know, if I've said something that's not according to God's Word, you can always uh, contact me, chat with me on my messenger page and say, well, Brother Oscar, uh, that didn't sound good. Or that's not going according to scriptures. But as we ask you, if you want to debate anything Brother Oscar has said, have book, chapter, and verse of what you are trying to prove. And that's all we ask, how book, chapter, and verse of the Bible, not something that someone told you, not something from a commentary, but according to the Word of God this morning. And I hope that you understand that. But before we get into the lesson, you know what Brother Oscar wants you to do. Get relaxed, get relaxed, get relaxed. Go ahead on to have your favorite drink, coffee, tea, milk, juice, hot chocolate, cold chocolate, whatever uh, suits your fancy. <laughs> suits your fancy this morning and relax. Get relaxed, get relaxed. If you relax, reclining out, recline on out. If you relaxed at your uh, dinette table, go ahead on and have a seat. But what we do request here that you have a copy of God's Word so that you may see where we are coming from this morning because we don't just want to just throw anything at you. I don't believe in doing that. I just don't want to say what I believe or what I think or what traditions may say, but I want to teach from God's Word and what God's Word is saying this morning. So we hope that you have a copy of God's Word, and we just want you to turn with us to 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter. Turn there with us this morning, and we want to talk about this morning the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. The fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And, of course, we've been talking about what is, uh, do that look like? What is, uh, uh, what we are dealing with when we are talking about the fellowship of the ministering of the saints. And we say here Paul uh, was talking about giving uh, to uh, the the uh, poor saints in Jerusalem, and we, we said Paul mentioned Macedonia and used them as an example how they gave, and they gave from a, a heart of love. They gave, uh, though they were facing difficulties and deep, deep poverty, they still gave and gave and gave, and Paul asked them for a contribution to take 
to Jerusalem so that he can give it uh, to the poor saints there. And we, we talked about that. And, of course, we talked about how the Corinthian church, uh, though they're growing in, in, in so many areas. Uh, Paul said in verse 7, Therefore, as ye abound in everything in faith, utterance and knowledge and all diligence in your love to us see, that you abound in this grace also. What grace? Grace and giving. Grace and giving. And many of us, we, we, we find it so hard to give. Okay? And, and you may well, give, give what, Brother Oscar? Well, first of all, giving of yourselves. And many of us, we find it so hard to do that. Yes, we do. Christ himself, and, and this is the point that we must understand, Christ himself gave of himself, okay? Christ himself, when he came down on this earth, became poor so that we may become rich, and we talked about that too. Christ himself, when he came down from the beauty of heaven, and we continue saying that in our prayers, uh, from the beauty of heaven, he, he was with the Father. He was enjoying being in heaven with the Father, but he came down on this earth, was born in a manger, lived in, in, with a carpenter and his wife, uh, uh, being the mother, uh, uh, Mary was his mother, and Joseph was his earthly father, and Joseph was a carpenter, and they didn't make no money that much, money, but at the time, uh, they were going to something, and uh, here, Jesus himself did not look at the things that he created or could have. But the fact that Jesus came down on this earth to die for you and for me and to give himself so that we may be free. And if we are calling ourselves, now I want you to understand this point. If we are calling ourselves Christians, and the word Christian to me Christ-like, we should have the same Caliber, we should be of the same, uh, of the same uh, makings, uh, like Jesus Christ, if I may use that term, and we should be able to give of ourselves in any predicament. And this is what the Macedonia Church did. They gave out of great when they were going to. Uh, trial of afflictions and uh, abundance. Uh, they gave abundance uh, out of the abundance and of their deep poverty. They still gave and gave and gave. And that is because they put Christ first and, of course, they put others also, instead of looking at themselves and putting themselves first, they gave of themselves. In verse 5, Paul said, they gave of themselves. And here in verse 7, he's telling the Corinthians that we want you, Corinthian church, to learn and do the same. To learn and do the same. Now you are right in everything else. But what we want you to do is to give of yourselves so that you may give and help others. Oh my friend, you know, when it comes to loving and helping others, some churches fail at that, don't they? When somebody need help, we send that person to the third degree before we give them a nickel or a dime. I, I help them to keep the roof over their heads. And some say 
you know, all of a sudden say, well, you got to get your own self up. I did. No, you didn't. Somebody was there to help you and pull you up and to help you. And we should be in the spot of helping each other. Help your brother if he fall. Help him to get up. If he fallen into a sin and can't pull himself out of that sin, help him. If he need a, a nickel, give it to him if you have more than what you should have. If you have more, if you have, oh, let's say, for an example, and I'm just using this for an example, if you have a job and you're making seven, eight thousand dollars a month, and you have an, and you have a thousand, two thousand left over, give that person five hundred uh, to to uh, pay his rent. The problem, and and, and I see this on, on on many occasions, the problems with many of us, we uh, we we would give uh, this person money. But we tell them, I want a payback. Now, nothing, don't, don't get me wrong, it's nothing to, to give and, and say you want it back. But catch is, our mindset should be the fact of giving anyway. And if that person cannot get at the point where, where he is or she is paying you back, hey, let it go. Forgive. Forgive. Let it go. And just thank the Lord that you was able to help that person when he's in a critical situation. Amen, Brother Oscar. Amen. And here Paul, let me read verse 7 again. And Paul says, Therefore, as ye abound in everything in faith, and utterance, and knowledge, and all diligence, and all diligence, and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also, the grace of giving, of giving, and uh, giving. Turn with me, I want to read this right quick, to First Thessalonians 3. First Thessalonians three. Turn with me there, right quick. First Thessalonians three, and uh, the verse is First uh, Thessalonians three, and the verse is ooh, and the verse is twelve, and let's start with verse eleven. And here Paul writes to. In First Thessalonians 3, he's writing to the Thessalonian church. And Paul says these words beginning at verse 11. Now God himself, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ, direct our way unto you. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his sex. With all his saints. Oh, my friend, don't you know a part of holiness is loving your brothers, loving your sisters as you increase and bound toward your love towards one another? And if you love Brother Oscar, you help Brother Oscar out. If you love this program, you would give to this program so that we may reach more people with the gospel. You shouldn't have a problem with that, but many of you do. Many of you believe it's wrong to help ministries out to continue on teaching and preaching and giving 
uh, meaning the Word of God. Many brothers and myself have given ourselves to learn what the Word of God says. We have went to these colleges. We have paid a lot of money, and Brother Oscar is still paying on his school loan. And that we have paid more money to learn God's Word so that we may be able, equipped, to spread God's word. And there's nothing wrong with helping brothers out there that's trying to teach and to preach God's word. We still have that love where we're helping one another to do just that, helping one another when they're down, helping one another when they need help. Now, I'm not talking about continuous help. Of course, you can help somebody, and like the, the saying goes, yeah, you can fish for a person, give them fish, but a person may catch more fish if you teach him and show him how to do it, which is true. I'm not saying to help a person continue helping them, but help them at a point where they can be, you know, self-sufficient for themselves. But when it comes to preaching and teaching the gospel, when others are teaching, they're helping you. So you should be able to say, here's a dime, here's a nickel, here's a quarter. Well, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about more money. Now, of course, you can't live off of nickel, dimes, and quarters. But what we're saying here is give for the cause of Christ. Help us to help you and help those that need help. Help the poor, as Paul is doing here in the Jerusalem church. Help, help, and help those that need help this morning. Stop being so, and many of us uh, are like this, and you know we are. Stop being so stingy. And many of us are stingy. We won't give to nothing. We won't give to no cause. You know, I'm watching TV, and uh, most of you probably have, um, most of you probably have, um, let me do this. Most of you have, seen this commercial on TV where they're showing little children sick and uh, they they get to my heart string when they do that and I said should I give this $19 a month should I give right now bro Oscar don't have nothing to give but I, I said to myself if I had to give I probably would give it uh, because they know how to get to your heart string but I'm not saying give, give to all causes because some causes are out there just to get your money, and they will trick you to to a point where uh, they they will take your money. And I'm not saying helping all causes. I'm helping everybody. But if you give them to a cause, make sure it's the right cause. But the church should be out there helping those that truly need help and truly are going through some things. That's why I believe the church door should be open to those who need help. Help them to be equipped to get good jobs. Help them to be equipped to take care of themselves. Help them. But but we, uh, of course, the gospel needs to be spread, but people do need to be helped also. And we don't need to overlook uh, that uh, situation either. People need help. And as the church, we should be in the position of helping those that need help. And in verse 8, Paul says in 8, 2 Corinthians 8, we're going to leave this thought with you. Paul says, I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. Paul says you need to prove. In other words, show your love for one another. Love deeply. Not just give to say, I gave. 
And most people do that. Look at what I've done. Don't do it for that purpose. Do it because you truly love one another. My friend, let's love one another. Let's help one another. Let's pull each other up. Let's pull each other up or we all are equal. Equality. <laughs> and that's why the church give. That's why we put in the collection plate. So that we may help others to be equality. So in the church there will be no one that need anything. But everyone is is on the same line. Everyone is not worrying about, you know, paying the bills. But when they come together, we can praise the Lord without worrying about keeping a roof over our heads. Amen, amen, and amen. We hope that we have said something to help you this morning. We really do. We hope that we have said something to help you see more of Christ and see Christ in a mighty, powerful way this morning. And we're just so delighted to be with you this morning, and we are so delighted to bring this chat to your listening ears, and we hope that we said something to you this morning. To help you make heaven your home. And this is Friday. And the weekend is coming up. And Sunday we hope. If the boys say the same. We hope that you get a chance to praise the Lord. Either you're streaming your services. Or you're going in person. We hope that you get a chance. To show Christ that love. That he's been given to us. All uh, this uh, week. Amen and amen. Will you pray with us, please? Our Father, which art in heaven, our Lord, our Lord, be thy name. Father, we thank you for allowing us to bring this program to the airways, Father. We thank you for allowing us to teach him to chat and to preach and to say things to help others to see more and more of Christ. Father, we pray for all of our listeners. Father, we pray uh, that they may show the, the world Christ in them, and they may be joyously doing it and walk with that snap, crackle, and pop with each step that they may take. Now may the grace of God, sweet communion, of the Holy Spirit rest through and abide with us until we meet again. In Jesus' blessed name do we pray. Amen and amen. Love somebody. Love everybody. Bye-bye. And may God bless.